This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create cursive letters and make an artificial drawing on technique with a pencil. You may have seen write on techniques before, but the important thing is that we're adding a pencil to it. It might not seem like much, but it doesn't always have to be a pencil, it can be anything. All right, let's get into it. All right, so inside of After Effects, we're going to be creating a pencil, the text, and then animating the text on and using that animation to power the animation of the pencil. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a new composition, okay? And that composition is going to be HDTV 1080 29.97, meaning it's 1920 by 1080 pixels, and uh, we're going at 29.97 frames per second for a duration of 30 seconds. Go ahead and hit okay. Starting off, you can see we have the transparency grid on. You can toggle that on or off as you need. So now we need to create the text. So you can go new text, you can click the text tool, or you can call it up by hitting control T, command T kind of thing. And then we're going to type something out. So we're just going to type uh, words. We're going to type words out. Now we will scale up the words to be larger, to get more of our frame, and use the align here to stick them in the center. Now you can rotate them or do whatever to them that you want. These words are just to be traced. So I'm just going to write trace me over those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pen tool here and just uh, we're going to use a stroke that is, you know, it's like a really dark gray blue down here. And it's going to be uh, 10 pixels. And then what we're going to do is basically draw over the areas that we would like to become the thin pencil line that we're putting in. And uh, using all the drawing tools, basically you can click and drag to pull out handles. You can hold down Alt and alter the handles. So for example, we come up here, I want a hard change. So I hold down Alt and then I pull the handles back like that. And then it creates a totally different look. But on this curve, I would like for it to be uh, curved. So we're going to do that. More curves here. In general, you want most of your cursive to be all curves. Uh, da -ba -ba. Don't worry if you happen to click off of your path. It's totally uh, fixable. You can just go back in, reselect the pen tool, and keep on drawing. Unlike a brush stroke, we're not going to be making use of the variable widths of this thing and we are out. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna poke out the eye of the trace me layer here and we'll see what we've created. Uh, looks to say words. Uh, that looks pretty accurate to what words look like, good. And now what we need to do is create an object that will follow the path of animating this on. So grab this, hit UU, and you'll find in shape one, inside path one is path. And these are all the points of the path. We're going to create a new null object, and we're going to call this uh, follower. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the path, we're going to copy it, go into the follower here, the position, and paste it. All right. So what that does is it's going to cause this to follow along with that. Perfectly good. Now, something else you might want to consider is having this follow this by rotation so that it's on it like a cart on a track. Uh, that's not totally necessary to us, but if you wanted to do it, you could go layer, transform, auto orient, and then orient along path. So now we've got this coming on. We also need to have uh, the path animate itself on. So I'm just gonna go ahead a few frames to uh, one second into the animation. I'm gonna shift both of these layers to sort of start here. And I'm going to add to this a trim paths. Now what trim path does is it will change the start and end of a path. So I'm going to set it to zero, zero at the start. So the end starts at 0%. And then the last keyframe of the follower here, we're going to set it to be at 100%. So what you can see is that the follower is now constantly on that leading edge of the line. Now, if we take these keyframes and look at them here, we can then do things like easy ease them. That could be cool. Um, 
And you'll find that once you start manipulating these, you'll see something very interesting about these dots in between. These are called roving keyframes, which means even though they happen to have positional data, they are not uh, temporally locked. Meaning, as I move this end keyframe here, uh, or if I start altering things like its handles, all of these dots will shift along the line accordingly. Perfectly good stuff. Okay, so what I'd like to do is to take all of these keyframes that can be altered, and then we're going to alter them to have this kind of a uh, fast and then slow kind of start to them. So they start, and they go really fast, and then they slow down. And overall, we'd like to make this uh, last quite a bit longer, so I'm going to grab these end keyframes, drag them out. So there we go. Nice and slow to the finish. This is really just for dramatic effect. You do it however you want. I'm just showing you that these roved keyframes will adjust depending on what you do to the solid keyframes. Okay, so what I'd like to add now is the paper in behind. Uh, we're gonna make a new solid for this, okay. We're going to apply to it the grid. And then we're gonna set the blending mode to normal, give this grid a color of like 200, saturation of 50, uh, darkness of 80 perhaps. And then we just drag these points out, drag this one off the screen, and this one over here. And then we've got some lovely lines on our lined paper. I think that looks pretty nice. And then we go and get a turbulent noise, bring that out here. We're gonna set its blending mode to multiply. So we're just adding this stuff in, make it maybe a bit more contrasty, transform it, make it a bit larger, uh, set its brightness up a bit like this, set its opacity down like so. And you know, if you're not happy with where that is, then uh, change its evolution random seed to put it around. But I think that looks pretty good for paper. Let's just call this paper, and what we're going to do is pre-compose that, Control shift c move all attributes into the new composition, good. Okay, this all looks fine and dandy in here. Now I'm just going to uh, rotate it a little bit and uh, scale it up, So just so it's not uh, perfectly square. Cool. And what I might do is just uh, fast blur it a little bit out here. So the paper is a little bit fuzzy. Okay, cool. So we've got that. Paper is now out in a skew. Don't touch it. Uh, in fact, we can lock the trace me layer. And what we need to do now is make a pencil. So I do that by making everything inside a shape layer. So I create a new shape layer. And then in there, I add things like a rectangle. And this rectangle will be forming uh, the base of the uh, pencil here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, unlink the size here and make it about a thousand by a hundred large. That's perfectly good. Now we're going to add to this a fill. That fill is going to be a nice uh, medium range color here. Let's go 215 on here. Let's go uh, saturation of like 80. Uh, we have brightness of uh, 80 as well. Okay, cool. So we've created this part of the pencil, and now we need to create a shadow and a highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group. All right, in this group I'm going to rename uh, Pencil Core. I'm going to put the fill in there. I'm going to put the rectangle in there, and then I'm going to make sure in that Pencil Core that the fill is under the rectangle. That's important. And then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call this the shadow. Okay. Now, if we go into the shadow, we can change its fill, and uh, I would make it more saturated and uh, less bright. And since we've got a size 100 100, well, then you can just do something like uh, make it uh, only 33 wide, and then change its position to be down, down here like so, you know, maybe like that. So you've got a shadow on the bottom. Then we just duplicate that shadow, okay? And this one is going to be the highlight. Same kind of thing for it. Its fill needs to be a bit brighter. So make it less saturated and more bright, okay? And then we take the transform 
of the rectangle needs to be the same width, and we just put it up here, so at negative uh, 33, 32, around there, kind of like that. So it's sort of a faking being a hexagon at the moment. So that kind of sets up a little bit of how the pencil needs to be. Now you can do things like uh, add an eraser, you can add a pencil tip to it, which all pencils should have tips on them. So we're going to add another group. This is going to be the tip, okay? And uh, we're going to add to it a polystar. A polystar is going to be a polygon, not a star. It's going to have three sides. Uh, and inside that tip, we also need to add a fill. That fill probably shouldn't be red. It should be like a hue of 40, very low on the saturation, uh, pretty high on the brightness. Okay, something like this. And then you just need to, you know, rotate and transform this to be in the correct place. I need to mess with its uh, transform, probably, to uh, make sure that it fits in with where we intend for it to go. Move it out here like so. Now, you'll recall that my pencil looked quite a bit better than this pencil, but, you know, I don't know what do you, what do you want from me on that account. I mean, it just took me a lot longer to do it. You can put as much detail into your pencil as you would like. Let's just say, for argument's sake, this is the pencil. Pencil. Okay, sweet. What you want to do is take up your pan behind tool, grab its anchor point, stick it on the tip of the, of the nib or nub or whatever you want to call that. Okay, good. Now, normally I would say just parent this to this, but that's not exactly what we want. In fact, all we really want is the position to be the same. So just take the position of this and we're going to set a expression for it by holding an alt and clicking the stopwatch and the position of this becomes the position of that. Okay, so you can see how that works that now it's already uh, writing on pretty well. I think that's that's working out good. Some things that you want to be able to change though are being able to move this around. So instead we're going to type value plus that, meaning we can take this pencil and we can add all sorts of values to it. If we put it in value zero, zero, it's going to be locked right there. But let's say we put a keyframe here and put a keyframe here at the end. And then at the start, we just uh, take this pencil and we just drag it away. So the pencil comes on and then starts writing. And then at the end, you know, it comes under like this, just like we did. Cool. So that's a thing we can do with this pencil. That's pretty great. Uh, you might want to take those and easy ease them, I suppose. That's usually a nice thing to do. Something else to do is to call up the rotation value of this thing. And we're going to set some keyframes for it, uh, such that we would like it to sort of be up at an angle like this, and at the end be at a slightly more relaxed angle, then when it comes to rest, if we have the angle be something like that, and, you know, maybe at the beginning we have the angle be like this, so it comes on, does some drawing, moves around, and we'll easy ease these keyframes as well. Now, another thing that the pencil was doing was it was shaking around a lot while it was writing. Now, why it was doing that is because we created an expression that would link the rotation to the acceleration or the velocity of its position. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Alt, we're going to click on the rotation here, and we're going to type in the resultant, which is going to be wiggle, and then in brackets, this is going to be uh, x comma y at this point. And then we have to define x as, you know, the number of times per second we want this to happen, so let's say 2. And then the y will equal, this is a tough one, we like it to equal the velocity of this thing's position. So, but not necessarily this position because this is linked to the position of the followers. So this is going to be linked to this, you know, transform dot position dot velocity. And then put an end to that, okay? It's gonna tell you that it needs to be a scalar property. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here is put in square brackets uh, zero, and that should uh, even it up. Now what this is doing is going totally nuts, which uh, you don't necessarily want 
to have happen. Uh, it is a little bit outlandish. So what you need to do, and you can see right here, the number is just crazy. The number is too big. Is multiply this by something. Okay, I would say multiply it by uh, 0.01, and that will uh, really calm it down, I believe. So you can see that it's still a little bit twitchy, but you know it is starting out as a number that is way too big and uh, being way too effective at shaking things around. So that 0.01 turned into something that looks nice when applied to rotation. So there you go, you've got a pencil uh, writing, shaking around as it's going fast. I think that pretty much does it for the pencil. The last thing to do is to stylize the words here so that they look more like graphite on paper. So this is going to require a bunch of things, like the turbulent noise, which is pretty nice. Uh, the turbulent noise will need a high contrast. It'll need, uh, you know, not a lot of darkness, for example, uh, way more contrast. It will need to be transformed to be quite tiny in these little flecks that we're putting in everything. Very tiny indeed. We would also like a, um, a noise HLS to be out on this thing, and we'll be messing with the lightness uh, quite a bit, maybe 50% of the lightness. We're going to be messing around with things like, like a tint, just to make sure that nothing uh, creates any erroneous color. We would like to put out there a rough and edges, which will apply to the alpha bounds of that shape. So we'd like to scale that down to like a 10. So look how, look how blurry and crazy that's getting. Cool. Uh, the border we can uh, set to four. So you see it's getting like a fuzzy border around it. Okay, so far so good. And now we would like a, uh, a curves to come out onto this. Set of curves uh, on that curves. We're not going to affect the RGB, we're going to affect the alpha to make it uh, more radical, like this. And now I'm going to put a fast blur just above the curves, uh, set to 1, sort of blur everything out. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is set it to multiply. And uh, there we go. Sounds like the pencil is drawing this thing on. Words. Uh, Cool. And you can make this effect more or less pronounced as you like. It is wide open. Just tweak all of the values in here to make it look more or less like the graphite of your choosing. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, showing you how to create a pencil writing in cursive in Adobe After Effects. Stop by PremiumBeat.com for all of your royalty-free sound effects and music needs, and stop by the blog on Premium Beat for more tips, tricks, and tutorials in not only After Effects, but other applications as well. You'll get information from industry experts like myself and others in their application of choice. This is just what I'm good at, and there are certainly other people on Premium beat.com who are great at After Effects too. So definitely check out everybody's work on there. They're all doing a great job. If you want to see more of what I do, check out evanabrams.com or the YouTube channel EC Abrams or hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams. I'm trying to always post things that are inspiring to me and could be helpful to you. Anyway, that's about it. If you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe to Premium Beats channels and uh, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a nice day.